designated mourner. I am the designated mourner. I have to tell you that a very special little world has died. And I am the designated mourner. Oh, yes. It's an important custom in many groups and tribes. Someone is assigned to grieve, to wail, and light the public ritual fire. Someone is assigned when there's no one else. <laughs> Christ. I remember so clearly the moment... Uh, when was that? Years ago. When someone was saying, if God didn't like assholes, he wouldn't have made so many of them. And the person who was saying it looked right at me as he said it. <laughs> I think someone asked me, uh, say, are you all right? And I said, you know, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm fine, really. By the way, do you remember when people used to say that all the time? I'm fine, really. I'm fine, really. <laughs> I have to admit it was an expression I always absolutely hated. But anyway, you know, we all used it. I remember saying to Judy, I don't sort of understand this need you have to look for beauty in subtler things. Look at your own hand. Look at your hand, the plate, the cake, the table. I guess the search for more refined forms of punishment never comes to an end. After all, there are so many ways that life can be squeezed out of a human body. Can a method be found which is more in keeping with the essential sweetness of our human nature? A rather cruel queen once plaintively asked, or so it said. I loved him so much it was a kind of torture. Every morning, waiting, watching his face in those squirming long moments of sleep and half-sleep as he turned and stretched. I sat there beside him, my hand beside him, not touching him, and pain would fill up my body inch by inch as if someone were pouring it out of a pitcher. You see, I think we ought to be precise about facts. I mean, very, very precise about historical facts. Or, I mean, for God's sake, let's try to be. Or, I mean, for God's sake, let's pretend to be. Or something. <laughs> anyway. Well, at any rate, there are those who believe that it was a columnist for a newspaper called the New York Sun who in 1902 first coined that wonderful pair of neatly matching phrases, highbrow and lowbrow. I watched him wake up, the squirming stilled, touched his face, his neck, his mouth, kissed him, one hand lying deep in his hair, oily and thick, like a bucket full of worms. The one thing he never would say, the word he couldn't stand, love. I love you. A highbrow was someone who liked the finer things. You know, saving the Rembrandt from the burning building rather than the baby or the fried chicken or whatever. While a lowbrow was someone who you might say liked to take the easy way in the cultural sphere. <laughs> oh, pinups, the funny papers, you know, cheap entertainment. There are ideas that are 
almost like formalized greetings. Everyone agrees with them, but we keep repeating them anyway, all day long. Everyone keeps saying, for example, human motivation is very complex. But if you stop and think about it, you have to admit that human motivation is not complex. Or it's complex only in the way that the motivation of a fly is complex. In other words, if you try to swat a fly, it moves out of the way, and humans are the same. They step aside when they sense something coming about to hit them in the face. Of course, you do see the occasional exception, the person who just stands there and waits for the blow. I love silence, the beauty of silence, the shadows of trees, Japanese monasteries buried in snow, surrounded by forest. Loneliness, Death in the dark forest. But my life was different. A different way, a city. People, concerts, poetry. Altogether, I was lucky. One of the few because I paid a little price for the things that I thought. I paid a price, so my life was not nothing. My life had something in it. All human beings have a need to hear stories. And a pretentious fraud I knew in school even used to say that stories are actually as necessary as food. I hated that. But do you know it's true? If people don't dream at night, they go insane, and by day they need stories. It's just that simple. Now, some people like to get their stories from gossip, and some people like to get them from novels or plays. Personally, I've always liked newspapers the best. The stories in newspapers are brief, they're varied, and every once in a while you get to read about someone you know, a friend or an acquaintance suddenly pops up. Incidentally, have you ever noticed the way that people are always asking as if there would be a new answer each time? How can this have happened? How can that have happened? Why, it seems impossible, etc. When actually, the answer to those questions is always the same. Now, you remember I was mentioning God a moment ago. Well, that reminded me of something an old acquaintance of mine always used to say when people said things like that. 